contractor and charge those homeowners the cost of removing um, the debris, whatever, from the preserve. Not too, Not too long after that, that meeting, it became, it became pretty, pretty obvious that uh, this was going to be very difficult to prove because does all of them ask for proof, and obviously uh, we don't have that. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that if it's behind your yard and the only way to get there is to walk through your yard, it's yours, but again, we can't prove that. So uh, I would like to make a motion. Okay, I'm sorry. The other thing we did was we put those charges on hold. So I would like uh, to make a motion to uh, eliminate the, uh, those charges uh, based on what we did a few months ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Did you hear that, Dennis? Daryl seconds. Yes. Discussion. Yeah. Just for discussion, there, there was an attempt with the contractor to go out, go to the specific spots via GPS coordinate to validate that, but due to the storms and then uh, some illnesses and some other stuff, that, that did not occur. So I, I don't at this time actually have any. I don't have anything. Unless. No other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion back. Senator. Okay, next moving on to what? New business. New business. New business. John? Yes. Uh, safety committee made a recommendation because of the schedule last month. We uh, decided to hold off on presenting it. I put on front of each of the board members a map. Uh, the recommendation was to start with the speed humps, um, our sheriff's patrol is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, not doing us much good. They All they do is stop people and give them warnings, which I think is about as useless as it can be. Um, you know, it, it's nothing to go home and be able to laugh about being able to get out of the ticket. Um, so there's the map you'll see of the, the roads. We reconfirmed it today or yesterday. We took a ride. Todd and I did to the, the confirm these spots. These are the two long runways that we've got in the community. Seem to be the, the the biggest area. Those of you that can identify by locations on the golf course, uh, the one one speed hump, not a speed bump, but a speed hump. There's a difference. Would be located at about even with the green for number 10 going across Stony Brook Golf Drive. And the other one would be between Burwich and Brixham on Stony Brook Drive. And what the difference is between a speed hump and a speed bump is that a speed hump allows you to keep going at a normal pace as long as you're doing the speed limit. It, it's not like what we've got at the gate, the front gate, which are speed bumps, and those actually look to try to get you to stop. Uh, this is, they're rated by miles per hour, and they're trying to get you to within a, a reasonable realm. And, and for anybody to say that we don't have a speeding problem in this community, uh, they're obviously not paying attention. Um, so I'm going to make the motion that we secure uh, two sets of these, not to exceed $3,000. I was able to locate them uh, through a connection I have. We can get free shipping in here, and they're heavy, so that was a big deal that would have been a couple hundred dollars more easily. Um, so I'd like to make the motion that we go ahead and purchase and install the speed humps in these two locations, not to exceed $3,000. Second. Discussion? What? Go ahead. Question. These are the, the rubber speed humps? Yes. Thick rubber ones? Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're um, rough, rough dimensions, uh, 35 inches wide, meaning from the starting edge up and down. So they're very gradual as compared to a speed bump. Um, 
you know, and, and the height of them determines the, the mile per hour. Uh, these can be installed very easily. Um, and when they do the roads, they can be pulled up and put back down. Are they driven in? Yeah, there's special the spikes that go in for asphalt. Uh, have we checked with the uh, first aid, the fire department, as far as the, what their feelings are about I've it? Checked with the fire department. Um, you know, they're going over speed bumps right now, coming into the community. Mm -hmm. We're talking speed humps. Um, at, at some point, somebody's going to get picked off by one of these people driving at 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So, where do you rate it out? Where do you make the decision? To me, it makes more sense for us to control the speeders. And if the fire department comes in and it takes a little bit longer for them to get to a, a location, that's what it's going to take. I know there, there, there was some discussion prior, because this is not Yeah, I know. But the, yeah. the discussion that's, that's been had for years here hasn't relinquished the problem that we have with speeders. And so rather than doing nothing, it was decided in the safety committee that it was time to do something. Mm -hmm. And this is a start, and if it works out for us, we may have to add other ones. There's other areas in the community that are very fast. What is the uh, life expectancy of these speed humps? I would expect they're going to last easily eight to 10 years. Yeah, it is bulk, like a vulcanized rubber. It yeah. Correct, so they, there's no weather issues. Yeah. Driving emergency response vehicles over these speed humps does nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. We don't, that size vehicle doesn't even feel them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, I have a question. Yes, Dennis. Uh, do we, have we thought about, um, and I know this is really difficult to do, to somehow monitor this to see if it's working with these two sets before we install, uh, you know, five or six more sets somewhere. I know that's hard to do, but did your committee have any discussion on that? Yeah, the, the, the thought was is that we've got to start somewhere. So we put these in, and it's not like we're going to turn around in another month and put two more in, or another two months and put two more in. Um, I would suspect that we probably have these in for six months to a year before it would even come up for evaluation. And if we continue with the sheriff's patrol, um, you know, they w would be able to give us some feedback uh, whether or not people are driving slower. You know, and then okay, we'll know. Thank you. Then we'll know if we ha if we have it. But if we just continue with the sheriff's patrols because they're not doing what we've asked them yeah. to do, then. Maybe we'll be at a different place. We'll have to make the decision on our own. Thanks, Jeff. Another good point is we know about this issue because the residents tell us there's an issue. So if, if the residents that you know watch the YouTube come to the meetings or, or up and down and see us on the streets, let us know if they're working. And, and you know we know we know we want one on the, the NASCAR 500 track uh, in the back. We already know you want that. Here, here's a here's a thought. Would we be better off spending the money and maybe spending more money and go with the traffic hawk? So what, did, what did you say? Would we be better off instead of spending this three thousand dollars, put three thousand and some more to it and purchase the traffic hawk, which will ultimately stop the speed? What is that? I don't, what is that? I don't know what that is. The traffic, traffic hawk is a camera system that will monitor speeders take a picture of their license plate and what is that you can't give them a ticket can you? you can't give them a ticket no. give them a fine though it was this was discussed in the safety committee and it was felt that this was a good starting point oh, I, I, and, and, if, and then yeah. they'll always be able to be used and if it ends up that it doesn't solve the problem you know that the the board past boards have discussed all of these options and done nothing and to me there's just a point where you have to try something this is the least expensive option for us to start with that hawk is going to cost probably twice that much without a question and then we still have we're only getting it in one spot in the community where we're getting it this in two um, you know, 
And, and I have to agree that the placement of these two, I mean, I, I walk every night and every morning, and there are times where, you know, you, you question how fast the vehicles are going beside you, um, especially if there's small children riding bikes, and, and I think the placement is inappropriate. Yes, Dennis. Um, did you discuss some kind of, discuss some kind of sign for the side of the road that says to be up or, or anything? No, we didn't, but that could be added. They have them available. Uh, both locations were selected because there's also a street light right there. So they will have a street light over them. We could easily put up some temporary flags or markers um, if necessary, or we can purchase in addition a slowed speed bump, speed bump signs, uh, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to slow people down until they actually drive over. Well, the other thing to consider is these speed humps are rated at the speed limit for the road. So notifying somebody that if they're going to speed limit, they're going to hit a bump that they're really not even going to notice. It's just going to be like a hump in the road. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessary. If they're going fast, yeah, you're going to know it. Yeah. Sharon. I guess the question I have is if we don't put up a sign and I understand their speed, are we live? For under their car. Well, I'd, I'd put that up that they put the speed bumps in at the gate, and I don't know that they ever indicated that those were there at, at the main gate. Um, you know, so obviously we've we covered that process at some at some juncture. Yeah, yeah, but the bar, the gate, the bar. There. Not for everybody it doesn't. Most of the time there's a there. Anyway, there's a there that's gonna gonna slow you down and I am just playing devil's advocate on uh sign. I would totally agree with you on speed humps. I'm just saying should we have a warning? and if we don't you know, if it's twelve o'clock at night and they go over at fifty miles an hour and Turn their muffler off. Are we live? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Without a second. So I, I think I think where we are now is there was a motion for a cap up to 3K to buy the humps. Um, there was a second. This is discussion. If you know, I, I say we we go ahead with the vote, and then if we want to reach out to you know legal and or do a little precedence checking to buy the signs later they're cheap enough that they probably fall on the threshold that we can do that that it's a non-issue but you know i think for for right now we're looking at the higher cost of the speed humps um so you know yeah well sharon had a comment oh. before yeah. we go to vote i think don's already answered my question because what i was going to ask is in the future when the perhaps more humps and I would recommend Lancaster Road. We have an east stop sign and a west stop sign. And the people ignore that all the time. I am very, very, very surprised that there has not been an accident there. Because they're oblivious. I was leaving to go to a friend's house last night, I had a friend with me, and I do a double stop. Because not always at the end of Lancaster do our golfers stop. And they should. They should stop and look. Mm -hmm. But I've got like a 3,000 pound car or vehicle. If I hit that golfer, I guarantee you I know he's going to come out on top. So I always stop and I look. I make sure they're not coming. I go to the end of the street. I stop again. And why? Because I know that the east and west stop signs are oblivious. Nobody cares. So if you see that these pumps are working to slow people down, in the future, would it be possible that there would also be a pump at that both stop signs so that people really will stop? Well, I'm sure it will be reviewed. Yeah, Pardon? I'm sure it will be reviewed. Thank you. You know, there's multiple places in the community that people have complained about the speeder. So um, it's it's a place. One, one other thing before we vote on it, I did check with uh, people in Grandeza and with a couple of the other communities, they are all using speed pumps. 
mm -hmm. of some form or, uh, or nature. So uh, it's not as though, I think we're just late to the party. No, there are a multitude, like you said, of communities that have these. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, one more. Hey, hey, hey Daryl. Melissa. Jerry. I have Darryl, wait. Hang on, Janice. I agree with you guys. I think it's a great idea. Uh, they going to have a strike or something on them? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's all on the And they'll be under a traffic, or they'll be under the light pole. That's all on the light. That shows that. Black and yellow. Okay, so we're, we're voting on a cap of $3,000 for two speed pumps on these locations. All in favor? Aye. 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 I still have a question there. Hold on. Okay. I still have a question there. Well, I can't hear him. He's down. Sorry, Dennis, I can't hear you. Yeah, you broke up a little bit. What's your question for Daryl? Okay. okay. Uh, in those, those other communities, communities are, they are they signed? signed? Yeah, so a lot of them are. And it's usually it's a small like octagon sign or yellow sign that just says speed hump or speed bump. And I think it's mainly for walkers, bicycles, things like that. I don't think golf carts are, you know, like a, too too much involved with going over it. The danger is more of the misstep of the walkers and uh, bicyclists. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have a question. I have a question. Do we still have on the table to at least look at the traffic clock at some point, or has that been tabled? It's, it's currently tabled in discussion at the safety committee still. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six in favor. Dennis is aye. Yes. yes Six aye. in favor, one nay. Passed. Okay, next, John, you again, copy machine contract? Yes, yeah, I, I have been reviewing contracts uh, for the community, um, and the contract we have for the copy machine in the office, I have yet to be able to find where it was approved within our uh, by the master board. I checked up on the on the copy itself. Copier itself currently that copier sells for about forty seven hundred dollars. Uh, the next model up, the bigger one is fifty five hundred dollars. The in reviewing the contract, which is basically non um, cancelable takes us to 2025, we are spending between the rental on the machine and the demanded maintenance uh, in the excess of $13,000. And the return on the investment is uh, for the owners, for the company we ended up renting it from, is about 80%. Uh, uh, in the five-year planning where was an effort to put in for a copy machine so at the end of 2025 we can buy our own machine and then we're just dealing with maintenance and even if we get the top of the line we're only looking at about six grand and they do last I can tell you who I've I have purchased three of them over 25 years for my and it's uh, Xerox top of the line and it's nowhere near that kind of money. So um, I, I bring it up just simply from a standpoint that we are trying to locate all these contracts. We're trying to track down where the money is being spent. Um, that is one that, that's definitely uh, sideways. If somebody's got a memory of when that thing was approved, I'd love to hear it, you know, because um, you know, I, I can't find anything to support why it was ever ever set up that way. It doesn't make any sense to me that we wouldn't have gone out and just purchased our own machine. But, you know, I wanted to bring it up just so that people knew that we're addressing it. The big thing is that we have to make sure that uh, three, a month before the contract runs out in 2025, if I'm not on the board, that somebody remembers to send a send a note that we're canceling. Otherwise, we've got to go another year, and we'll be up to about 15 grand. What month? 
what month? Well, the contract was written in November, so I would assume that October of 2025 yeah. would be uh, would be the point, and maybe we do it even earlier than that, like September of 2025. You know, so now everybody will, will remember that and put it on a calendar so we can get it. Okay. Thanks. That's all I've got on that. Thanks, John. Uh, Todd, Dennis, parking permits. Yeah, so the parking permits is on there. Uh, a lot of people remember, people that are new to the community probably don't know, but you used to get issued a barcode, so your car, and then you got the blue sticker that went in the window. Um, at some point, we stopped issuing the blue sticker. We still have blue stickers, but we stopped issuing the blue sticker. Um, I didn't even really notice until, uh, if anybody remembers, the resident drive-in scanner gate broke and was down hard, and everybody had to use the guest entrance. Interestingly enough, when I personally pulled up to the guest entrance, the guy leaned out, looked at my blue sticker, typed the number into his computer, and the gate went up, and off I went. Mind blown. So the reason I put this on is I want to go back to reissuing the blue stickers as a backup, not only as a parking permit that shows you're a resident, so that the guy who's driving around doesn't have to walk around your car for a barcode, uh, and then there's also a number on your windshield that associates you with being in Stonia Brook, but also it's a backup for when the technology fails, there's a, there's a written record of huh. codes. Now, I, I didn't put that down for a motion because it's already in the rules. Mm -hmm. I just want to reinstitute something we stopped doing that a long time ago. So how do you get one? <laughs> Come, come to the during normal business hours. Come and ask for one. Nicole, you bet. Okay. So, let's have a discussion about it. Todd, I have a question. Yeah. These uh, blue stickers. Yep. Are they removable? Yes. Could I take one from my car and put it into my neighbor's car, and he can come in? This, the same as you could the barcode. It's a sticker, just like the barcode. So, how are you going to keep somebody from who's not a resident? Getting taking somebody's sticker or putting it on another vehicle that shouldn't be in here. How do I stop them from taking the barcode off the side? Well, the barcode that's on the side, you can't take it off. Yes, you can. I changed it. Yeah. yeah, they don't stick well afterwards, but you can. Well, uh, now, now, take usually they won't work after you pull them off. They're they're destroyed. I had one of on my Corvette. Oh, I, I think the only but time people will use the, the blue sticker is if the technology is down. Yeah, well, and so the other kick, the, the sticker also goes on the inside. The Correct. Mm -hmm. Right, but but there's no way for the board to stop a person from doing the wrong thing. You know, at, at some point, if, if somebody wants to take their sticker and put it on somebody else's car, that's... Now, make no mistake, if you pull up to the guard shack and you have a blue decal, yeah, they're probably going to let you in. But that's that's not for me. And if you go in and then your car causes damage, that's the same number that they're going to use, and that's going to go right back to the resident. I have a question, so I'm going to answer. Anybody else on that? No. Go ahead, Tammy. Uh, I guess going back to it, you and I had talked a little bit up before. I am still confused on why we need this sticker other than in case we have a once in a, a blue moon we have an emergency. Enlighten me on why we have these stickers. But besides the fact that they're in the governing documents and they were never changed to be removed? For me, it's just for that reason is for when the gate scanner doesn't work, you have an alternate. I, yeah. When we moved in, we were given them for our cars. Like if we had to park at like the pool, right. that that was what we. That's what it's for. It's parking. Yeah. Right. right. All right. Did you get that, Tammy? I got the job. Well, I, I just see the collaboration here between your barcode and this thing. So that, that's my thing. Is I'm saying we've got two stickers that does one thing. Well, they but they um, but they don't. Right. The blue stickers are other than when these system goes down. And you still can use the barcode for access entry. They're, they're also your your. I'm just trying to get it in my mind why we have two True. that pretty much will do the same thing. Because all you have to do is look at the barcode and put that number in. Um, so just my thoughts. That's all. Put the barcode on the other side. Right there. Yeah. And Daryl, you know, didn't they tell you you could also use that blue sticker if you parked on the street? Also. No. 
we okay. were told we were just told we could use it if we had like overflow parking to park in the, the pool. Sure. That way we wouldn't get towed or ticketed. We didn't put them in any park. I know the blue, I know the blue stickers were used when parents went to pick up their children and, and oh, they were yeah. there. Any vehicle that's over there better have a blue sticker, otherwise it doesn't belong there. No, no. no. we have a new system for that. They're using hangers for that. They're not. Yeah, we don't hmm. we don't use the it, and I can, I can tell you, you don't do that anymore. No, we use a a, par a student parking pass because everybody has a blue sticker, so only people that have the parking pass are allowed to go over okay. there for school pick up and drop off instead of just having it in the okay. of the cars. And that way you could switch and the, vehicles if someone else is no, picking up No, house. each house gets two vehicles. Oh, I mean, okay. two stickers per household. And they're basically, Nicole has your address and your license, so if, if anybody's trying to give it to their friend and they write the security notices that yeah, you know, that's not you, because he has a whole sheet, then you get fine. So, and to, so just to put the conversation to rest, our, our governing documents do say you will have um, your know, barcode and, and a parking sticker. So if there's if there wants to be a discussion later, somebody wants to do the research to do away with the extra stickers, that's fine. Uh, the reason I put this on the agenda is that we were issuing them. I know I got one in every single car that I own from when I moved into Stony Brook. I was, uh, Nicole actually put them on. Um, we stopped issuing them, but we need to reissue them again in accordance with their documents until such a time as the board votes for liberty. Yeah. Okay. okay. So maybe we should send you something out for the people that don't have them since I never got them when I moved in. So I'm What's sure that? That's not one of them. I never got one. <laughs> yeah, I never got one. So maybe we should tell them, well, hey, you need to get your blue sticker instead of just. Maybe I don't belong. <laughs> Moving on. Mark, trespassing. Oh, oh sorry. 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 Would it be to have the gate person? You know how you go to Walmart, just a little reader, the, the hand reader, the barcode reader, to have at the gate house, you get that thing goes down and have it go around and have them. We, we talked about that. He does have a hand scanner, oh, but be, with the heavy traffic flow, yeah. having him going out in front of the car, especially when he can just look. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it was, yeah. I'm telling by the time I pulled up to him, he was already going, Mr. Madden on Bellhaven, yeah, whoops, have a good day. Oh, holy crap. Because <laughs> you just typed, it's, I think it's a six digit number. Uh, and it's big, big numbers. So, anyway, uh, yeah, so moving on. Okay, Mark, trespassing mediation. Okay, so last month we talked about uh, trespassing or non residents coming into the community and, and, and fishing. Um, the issue is not so much the fishing, but more the trespassing. Mm -hmm. uh, I had brought up, uh, and I'll, I'll bring it up again and make a motion, that I think we should have our post orders amended to include that the rovers, um, if they see somebody fishing, they can get out of their vehicle, they can walk, and they can ask, where do they live? If they're not a resident, they can ask them to leave. If they refuse to leave, they can call the police and we have a trespassing. But nothing's been done. I, I think that's the easiest way around uh, of that situation. So uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, amend our post orders to include uh, the rovers uh, nonchalantly or, or whenever they can. They look and they see somebody fishing just to make sure that they are a resident. Do we have a second? We need a second to discuss. You can't. But actually, I have, it has to be a board member. I just have a question on your motion. I just have a question on your motion. Do you mean for them to get out of their car and enter CDD property? If, if, they're, if they're on CDD property on the bank of a CDD pond fishing, you want our rover to go engage them? Is there a problem with that? Yes. What's the problem? It's CDD property. You can't do that. Okay, I'll, I'll withdraw the motion. Well, so, but, but, and this this is a good discussion. This is where, and just to close this out uh, until next time, is that's where we are pushing to have a joint meeting with the CDD to create a memorandum of understanding that delineates these lines of what are guards are allowed to do because the CDDs engage engaged our security people before by going on the property. Really? 
right. historically. So we do need to have a conversation yes. with yes. that. I mean, that's a, a, yeah. an obvious great plan of doing it is, yeah. you know, asking them for their yeah. residency. And, and if, if it's not on CD to property, they already do it. I mean, I, I was personally at the gate. I had just fixed the gate again. And I watched a car tailgate. It hit their car. It broke it again. I fixed it, jumped in my Jeep, I followed them, they drove all the way down to Wyndham and were getting out of their car with fishing poles. Wow. No barcode, no uh -huh. but but I would tell you that the rover was a half a step ahead of me, already on the phone with the sheriff's office about trespass. I mean the the, the and the, but that was a drive in, so they're all over the drive ins, you know, the, the walkers are yeah, the, the walkers. Problems. And those are, and those are the ones so. Mark, I, I mean I totally get it. Uh -huh. uh, we just yeah. we just gotta get into the C D D and get that there. Yeah, because that's a great idea. It really is. So, who will be approaching the the CDD? Because I think it's something that we, 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 we are now at a tentative meeting uh, set up with the DD CDD for uh, November the 14th. In between our two meetings, uh, I'm still trying to work out a uh, dialing. Uh, our folks have asked that it would be closer to the Eve thing versus closer to noon, so they so that intend, uh, I intend to have a, a, a firm date uh, as soon as we get down there, which is just in about 20 days. Okay. Great. Did you have something to say? No, you know, uh, that's a great idea, I love it, but you have, you have a problem there, and if you don't have a sign that says that, that's like, you're going to be escaping, you're going to be escaping, I can't remember more. I would just say that the soft community is going to say they're trespassing because they're private property. Sometimes the white right sign at the gate that says private property. I'll look at that. Yeah, Thank you. Say that. I will, I will look at yeah, that. Yeah, you know, no, that's your absolute right. I don't want to see them. But if there are signs on the golf yeah. course. The, the other problem we have is. Course, but it's talking about the golf course. Work. Not. Yeah. You're not like on the outside of the wall or something. No. Yeah. 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 That's a great. Yep. I went through that in 10 and we went there four ways around my property in the middle of the night. Cops said the same thing. Put up sign. Den uh, this is something for Dennis. When, when, when you talk to Eileen, um, I'm assuming the, the, the lakes are HOA. Am I correct? The, the maintenance of the ponds. The, the maintenance is ours. The lakes themselves belong to the sea. Okay. Okay, next order of business, community center remodel. Yeah. Dad. Who wants to remodel the community center? Uh, if anybody out there is interested, I actually put a couple of copies on that table right there, uh, right here by the computer, the Zoom computer. If you want to look at them, pass them around, uh, whatever. Um, I did it in a computer modeling program that I have. Uh, what it boils down to is, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion from the residents with the, you know, we didn't get the building because of the money. Um, and then the tent, you know, requires, uh, it's, I think 100 people can fit in the tent, and then you, you can use it six times and all that stuff. So this room wasn't big enough. So what I've done is, uh, there's actually two different versions on that table. I think there's only a couple of copies. Uh, the board's got a couple of copies in front of them too. And if you remember last month's meeting, bathroom access from the gym is a huge problem for me. On the document you're looking at, I solved that problem. Um, and I've actually had a contractor come in. I should have a quote next week to look at it. Uh, both versions of that paper, uh, this side of the building, the changes are the same. So the two different versions specifically have to do with uh, this other corner. So what we're looking to do is, is where the double doors are on the gym now, is we're going to take those double doors out and we're going to slide them all the way up. Um, almost to the storage closet, which the two doors will go away for the male and female bathroom. Now, that'll actually knock the wall out in the gym and make the gym 33% bigger. Uh, so we can actually make the gym bigger, and then the female um, handicapped bathroom will actually be sealed and opened on the other side and become a gym bathroom, male, female, unisex. There will be a door on this side of the clubhouse, or on this side of the double doors, put in, and you will enter the current hallway, which will go all the way through, to use the male and female bathroom that currently exists from this side. So you'll have, to have access to the bathrooms from both this side of the double doors and the single bathroom on the other side of the double doors. 
the male handicap bathroom will also be reversed so that there's a unisex handicap bathroom accessible from the outside instead of having to go into the hallway or into the bathroom through multiple doors to get to the bathroom. Um, it sounds like a lot. It's really not. It's, it's knocking out one wall, moving probably three doors, and, and a little bit of drywall. Um, I, 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 I don't want to throw a number at you what it will cost, but I think it will solve the problem of 24-7 fitness, people would not want to go outside to have to go all the way around through the bathroom, and then also a little more access for uh, the people who have a little more trouble getting around uh, getting into a bathroom. Now, going back to the rest of the building, uh, what I would like to do in this room is the hiding space in the back, that wall, I want to remove it, I want to get rid of it. Um, I know why it was put there, I understand it's a floating wall, it won't be nothing to remove. And then I also want to go into the kitchen and where the current sink is and you have to pass through, I want to cut that out. And I want to make that a walk-in into the kitchen. And you'll put the sink on the other side, so you'll instead of a galley kitchen, you'll, you'll then have an open floor plan kitchen. Uh, we'll seal off this side of it, so you'll go into the kitchen from this room instead of from the hallway. What that does is that'll increase the footprint in this room uh, by enough square footage to increase to get it back to 100 up to about 110. Um, so that it, we would be able to put just as many people in here as you could in the in the Duffy's tent. Uh, for storage of this, for storage of the tables and the chairs, um, Kelly's actually done a great job helping me out, and so is John with some alternate storage solutions for the chairs. I mean, that you're sitting in now, you see the kind of the hodgepodge. Uh, to where we can store the tables and chairs in here. They won't be unsightly, they won't be ugly, they will be nice and stacked and easily accessible. The last thing for change uh, on, I think it's version, is it version three? Yeah. So version three, the only other change in addition to that we could do, uh, I'm kind of leaning away from, is we would take the current cam office and move it to where the current library is. And we would seal this hallway and 